Okay, we're going to have a quick look at debugging in MonoDevelop. So often when you debug something, you just write a lot of debug log statements, but that can get very hard to read in the console, especially if lots of other things are debugging. So this is the last scene from the FSM uh, building the framework tutorial. And this has the full game in it, uh, that then is going to be the basis for the rest of the tutorial. We've got an F-16 in that game, and the F-16 uh, is called into play when you target an item in the landscape. So we probably uh, want to make sure we're targeting the right items, and then when it blows up its bomb, we're blowing up the right items. So let's have a look at that a moment. What we're going to do is we're going to find the F-16's behavior, and we're going to go to it in Mono Develop. So the F-16 has this locking target state, and in that state, every update, it's casting a ray from the player's position forwards to see what it hits. So we can put a breakpoint here so that every time the code gets to this point, it stops and lets us inspect it, step it through. And then when it actually blows something up, it's finding everything inside a sphere around the bomb's position and sending take damage to that. So let's just check what those things are. Now, a lot of people think that you have to actually build your project in MonoDevelop, which is generally speaking a bad idea, and then run the editor, but you don't need to do that. All you need to do is go up and do run attach to process double click on the Unity editor and we're debugging this code. So let's run and attach to process. So let's go back to the game and start it. Now I've configured here my I've configured my player to automatically have the targeting computer that you're required to actually uh, fire the laser so that we don't have to go and find it. So what I'm going to do is just target the laser. And as soon as I do that, it goes into this lock locking target update code and we get our hit, because the raycast hit something, and we can start to inspect that. So there are a number of ways of inspecting things. One, we can just point the cursor at it. So that is our raycast hit, and we can pop that open. And we can see lots of information in there. Somewhere down here will be the transform, which was the terrain. And we can just, actually, if we want to, we can just pin that to the code. And it'll appear like a little post-it note we can move around over here, and so on and so forth. And we could go down here and pin that transform as well. So now every time we come into this code, that's just going to be automatically watched for us, right in context, right next to the code. The other choice is we could go up to the watch window here and type something in. So if we wanted to see hit.transform, we could just type that in up there. And this works better when you want to drill down because the pop-up's got a bug in it and it doesn't drill down very well. But we can, we can see all this data on that. And actually, we can even change values. We'll look at that in a moment. So the target position was a hit point. So let's step over that. So there's a menu for that. We could do step over. So you can see in that case on my computer, that's Shift-Command-O. So I'll just do that, Shift-Command-O. So the target position is now the hit point, and there it is. And we could, if we wanted to, go up here, type target position, go into it, and actually just change one of these values entirely to be something else. And that will update it, and the rest of the code will run with that new value. Again, we can step over, and then we can check the time in the current state. And you can see we're checking if it was more than five seconds. At the moment, it was 0.38. So let's run it again. It's back in there this time. Let's change time in current state. I think that's a property, probably. Uh, so I probably can't just change it. No, it won't let me change it because it's a read only property. We could go and debug that, though. So let's come back around one more time. This time, rather than stepping over time in current state, Let's step into it. So that's run, step into, on my computer, shift command I. And we actually go in to that code and we can see how that's been worked out. So the time in current state is the current time minus the time we entered the state, which was at 14 seconds, and the current time is 15 seconds. So let's go and change time entered state. And let's change it to we entered it at one second. So we'll go, uh, we can step straight out of this, not much point in this case, it's so simple, but run step out, would step out of this function call. 
shift command T on my computer. And we're now, of course, time and current state is now 14 seconds. So we can step into this code, which sets the current state to bombing run. And then you're right into the framework and you can follow exactly how that's working. So very powerful. Uh, it's eventually, I've, I've just set it to run again, so that would be run uh, and continue. Uh, basically, that's uh, command enter on my computer. So actually, it will break again the moment I switch back to the game because it's just stopped running the game loop because it's now in the background. So if we switch over and we fire again. Ooh, did I take that break point out? There we go. Oh, the F-16 was inbound, wasn't it? That's why it wasn't doing it again. We've actually, the F-16's come in and it's actually fired its bomb. So we can now see everything that's being hit by that bomb. So it's hitting uh, some world boundaries that I use. They're not going to get much of a take damage message. Again, good idea here. Let's actually pin that to the source code so that every time we come in here, we can see what it is. I can move it, it would be helpful. There we go. I'll stick, stick it over there, and then we'll just keep running it. So we hit the world boundaries, we hit the terrain, we hit the player. Oh dear, we're going to die, uh, and so on and so forth. All the different things that were hit by that bomb, and sure enough, game over. We blew it up right on the terrain right here in front of us. So uh, just press fire and space to get it running again, and it will do exactly the same thing again, apart from this time, have we got the targeting? Yes, there we go. Back into the targeting computer, and again, we can go and debug in here. If we want to turn the breakpoint off, we've got a couple of choices. We can turn them off individually by just clicking in the margin, and that will run now. So let's uh, let's fire that uh, bombing run properly, ignoring the fact we're getting killed. Hopefully the missile will get here in time. Yeah, there we go. The uh, F-16s arrived, what we're hitting now, we're hitting the world boundaries, the terrain, and that was it. You get the idea, we can very easily do that. Now, if we want to remove all breakpoints, it's just run, clear all breakpoints, and off we go. So let's just give our F-16 a bit of a bug, and let's see how we can trap exceptions when we're running it. So we've turned off maximize on play. You can see the F-16 has in set in the inspector the player that it's following. So let's see what happens if we forget to set that. Just set that to null a second. And then we have a go at firing our laser. You can see we've got all of these unassigned reference exceptions happening in there. So let's just go and have a look at those. Now, obviously, that is kind of handy because we can click on this and we can go straight there and find the fact it was it didn't know how to find the player's position. But sometimes it can be uh, hard to know what's actually happened and uh, how you came to be in a particular place in the code in the first place when that wasn't set properly. So let's go and have a look at how we can use two other tools, you know, the exception breakpoint tool. So we can go to exceptions in the run menu. And it was an argument null exception. And we can just add that to the stop on exceptions list over here. And let's add null reference as well, just while we're at it. So we can add those two. Now, when we run our game, it will actually stop where that problem occurs. Helps if you have unassigned reference exception, which is the one we actually should have done. Not argument, unassigned reference exception. Okay, so we'll add that one. Now we'll try. There we go. Now we've got our unassigned reference exception is stopping it. Uh, and we can see a stack trace here, but there's a much better tool for that. So we'll just close that. We can immediately go to the line. We can see what was null on this line. So player was null. Uh, hit was fine. So we've got uh, an exception. And then we can actually see in this call stack down here, all of the code that actually went wrong. So it went wrong in transform get position zero. The first line in our code was F16 behavior assess target. And that came from this state machine behavior update. And you can see how we can step through these. And actually when we set the context to being in here, so if you look at this and we just went to that source file line a second, so that's state machine behavior X, you can see if I hover over state, 
it will tell me exactly what the state was that it was in at that present time. And you can set the context for local variables by stepping through here and check what all the local variables are. All of those things just work when you step into this code. So it's pretty powerful, uh, pretty powerful tools for debugging. Uh, we can just carry on running by doing command enter. And if we get another exception, sure enough, there it is. And it can get a little depressing when you've got millions of them. Um, but there we go, uh, and another one. If it does get too much, you just turn off temporarily that exception in the exceptions here, or you can temporarily detach the debugger, and then your game will just carry on running. And uh, when you want to reattach it, you just do run, attach to process again. Double click on the Unity editor, back to the game. Sure enough, there's our breakpoint because we've got an exception. So, pretty straightforward to do. Uh, what often what I do is I just detach then, go and fix a bug. In this case, by assigning our player to the F16. So, where was it? There. When the player, pick him up, drop him on there, everything will be fine and dandy again. So this can be really helpful um, when, you, when you see these exceptions. One thing also to note is whenever you see an exception in here, just remember that the panel at the bottom can be expanded and it does show you the call stack, which you can read through if you didn't have the debugger attached. But as you can see, when you attach mono develop, it's a much faster method of getting to that, getting into that error. Uh, so that's it. Very quick introduction.